of a lotus field here. I'm going to go into the caravan and have a chat with Dan about what he's done in this particular build and how it's different to maybe some of the others we've done before. G'day guys. Right, so yeah, as Jen said, this one's a slightly different um, build for us. Uh, it's a little bit more conservative on the, on the scale. Um, but again, it's been specifically designed around the customer's requirements. So when they contacted us uh, six months ago, we were sort of talking about all of the usual questions that we asked. What type of camping do you do? What appliances do you want to run? You know, air conditioner, yes or no? Um, so basically, uh, what we came to was that they don't want to run their air conditioner off grid, um, which actually means that the system can be a lot smaller. As soon as you tell us that you want to run your air conditioner off grid, the system has to be quite large, um, both battery capacity and solar capacity to be able to do that for extended periods of time. Um, the other complicating factor with this particular van is because it's a little bit of an older van, so it's a 2018 build, um, it's got an IBIS 3 in it. So to run an IBIS 3 on uh, our inverted or in a drive inverters, uh, we have to modify the air conditioner to be able to do that. Um, so basically with this van, um, we've given the customer a bit of a smaller system so that they can still run the 240 volt appliances they want to run, coffee machine, toaster, microwave, you know, hair dryer if they want to, um, but not the air conditioner. Um, so at this point in time, the way that the system's been wired up is that, again, everything is available to be able to be used, um, except for the air conditioner. So we, we you know, um, we've gone about modifying this van to suit this particular customer's needs. So I'll just quickly go through the specs. Um, we've got a 280 amp hour battery. We've got a 2000 watt inverter but it is a transfer style inverter. So it is fully integrated through the van. Plug your mains in, it transfers over. Turn your inverter on, it powers everything in the van. Um, we've got a 240 volt charger. We've got a DC DC charger with the um, solar reg cabled out to a portable. Uh, so an Anderson plug on the side of the van. We removed the 450 watts of solar that was on the roof, so they're quite old panels, quite large for power output, so physically large for um, quite a small power output. Um, and we've replaced them with four 190 watt panels on the roof. So they've got 760 watts of solar on the roof coming down through a 40 amp MPPT. So um, basically, you know, once again, we've we've kind of gone about designing a system, as I said before, that's specific to this particular customer's needs. They also didn't want to have too much information. They were quite happy with just knowing um, how long they've got to go, the state of charge of the battery, and how much overall is coming in and out. So what we've done in the overhead cupboard is is given them the ability to turn their inverter on. Um, you can see the inverter's on at the moment. Um, we can turn the hot water service on. So did you wire that through? We've wired it in to be able to do that. So they can choose to run um, the hot water system on inverter if they want to. Uh, it's only a thousand watt element, thousand and eighty watt element, so that's fine. Um, but we've given them an EPRO um, battery monitor. So all we're looking at here is um, our percentage and our total discharge or charge at that particular time. So, um, you know, with a with a 40 amp solar regulator, you're gonna get, well, 760 watts is pretty much maxing that solar regulator out. So you're gonna get 40 amps in good sun coming back into the battery, which is quite a lot for a small battery bank. Um, so, you know, they've got a compressor fridge. Um, yeah, so as I say, the system is, is a little bit smaller, but still has all the nice functionality, all the nice features that we would normally put into our vans. Um, with this particular van, um, it's a Lotus. So the appliance inlet was at the front of the van. I've actually moved that um, and I've moved it down to the side of the van here, close to the inverter. 
Um, that's made the 240 volt side of things. Um, well, there's less cables running essentially, so I've been able to fully integrate all the 240 underneath the seat here, which makes it a little bit cleaner. Um, they also they also wanted a carafan, so we've installed a carafan for them, as you can see up in the front corner. And you're also mentioning this particular build that they wanted to go reasonably small at this stage, but designed in such a way that they could add on in the future. So in case they wanted to either change out or use their air conditioner, yep. um, or potentially add another battery or solar. So um, you consider that the overall design, right? Yeah, that's right. So just a little bit of background to this particular customer. This they bought this van brand new. Um, in 2018 and they've spent a bit of time you know already in the van using the van and, and understanding what they do and don't want they've just retired so they're about to start traveling a little bit more often so their requirements may change over time so when we actually discussed what they were looking for we always had in mind expansion for future as well so the way we, for example, the way we structured the roof up, um, all of the solar panels are condensed at the back, but there's still another space for another one at the, at the back, and there's still another one there and there on the van, so we can potentially fit another three solar panels up there. Um, we've got space under the seat for another battery. Yeah, we would have to move that around a little bit, but there's enough space under there to fit another battery. Um, so that's easy enough to drop in there and we've also got space underneath the other seat for our solar regulator and our fusing and our isolation for the solar circuit that would need to go in if that was the case. So um, future, future expansion or future proofing um, as some people like to call it is pretty important in the way that we do things particularly with smaller builds just in case the customer goes do you know what? I actually want to run my air conditioner. Um, and we did talk about that with them as well. So when they dropped the van off, we sort of had a bit of a conversation around maybe um, replacing the air conditioner with a um, with one of the new Dometic Fresh Jets, for example, which will be able to run on their inverter. So, so if they were to replace that air conditioner, but not anything else with the system, would the existing system run? It would, yeah. but just for not not very long. So, yeah. so you, you know, can use it during the day when you've got most sun. Pretty right? much, yeah. <laughs> you don't so think about your consumption, overall consumption. Absolutely. What the like and, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we got a we got a you know a specific amount of battery and a specific amount of solar, which is never going to be enough for running extended periods of time with an air conditioner, um, even with one of the more energy efficient um, uh, inverter style air conditioners. Um, but yeah, so we, we can replace this down the track. Uh, I mean, even in the short term, if they do decide that they want to be able to run this um, off grid, they could with a small modification to the air conditioner and we could make that available to them, even with a 2000 watt inverter, even though we're not, it's not recommended. I mean, this, this unit will draw 1700 watts, which is very, very close to the limit on that particular inverter. So. It's not necessarily something we're overly comfortable with doing, but you know, yeah, um, with the right um, electrical understanding and modification to the air conditioner, you can you can make that available for them. Um, but again, running it on a 280 amp hour battery, it's not going to give you a lot of run time. Um, so yeah, we we certainly have that in mind with future proofing. Um, so it's it's one of the one of the situations where it's, you know, that, as I say, they bought the van brand new, they knew what they wanted, but they also understand that maybe they would like to change it in the future as well. Cool, all right, so um, probably wrap that one up there and um, let us know if you've got any questions about any of our builds or this one in particular. I'm more than happy to answer them, um, get in contact with us and we'll be um, happy to respond. Cheers.